Hi everybody, this is Jules from Paper Gems by Jules and I'm jumping in real quick here to share some fun with this new stamp set called Monster Hugs and it is adorable. Um, it has four different little monster alien type creatures and they're so fun and great to color. And So I'm starting with this one-eyed cyclops little thing and um, what I'm going for is a glowing look. So I was trying to find something on YouTube to figure out how to make something look like it glows. I'm not an expert by any means when it comes to Copics. I am learning every day and I love watching videos of people that create amazing art. I follow a ton of people on Instagram to see what they do. So I kind of found a little color combination um, and I'll put all the colors. It was, you know, I tried to mark it here, but you know, rather than making this a three hour video of my coloring, um, I figure I'll just put something in the end It shows all the colors that I used for each of the creatures. But um, for this little guy, it was fun to use some really neon green colors, but in order to make the shadows, you had to use some deeper colors. So I was using like a BG 49, I think, um, was the, the darkest color on here. So um, super cute. And now this little guy, um, you know, funny story, we've been watching a lot of horror movies this weekend. So lo and behold, here I am coloring a little like devilish creature in red. So, you know, unintentional, but I guess it was subconsciously I had this in my mind. Um, so super easy. This one, um, you know, I'm not trying to do the glow effect. The goal with this card was to have this one little alien kind of glowing and lighting up the card. So you'll see that in a second what I do um, there. But these creatures are super cute. They're so fun and easy to color. Um, I have so many ideas of how to use them. I can't wait. Um, so now I'm using the Star Confetti Stencil by Unity. And I'm covering up with uh, some masking tape or I forget what that called. Uh, anyways, I'm covering the sections up, the sentiment and where I stamped the little creatures on there so that I can use embossing um, ink. However, I made a boo-boo. I forgot to put powder down. So as you can see, I'm doing things that I should never do. And in retrospect, I made lots of boo-boos, but hey, I'm crafting, right? That's what we do. Um, so I realize I'm still not enough ink. It's not all transferring. It's not all neat, but it's fine. It's a card, it's paper, and it's gonna be sent with love. So I use white embossing powder. I'm gonna use some colors now, but you know, you'll see that the colors stand out, um, or the white will stand out with the colors. Another little mistake. I did not mask the creatures. So I'm just going to color right over them. It doesn't matter because I'm going to just re-stamp those two and color them in. I didn't color those guys, so I'm okay. So I started out with a, let me find the color it was, sorry for the noise, Twisted Citron for the first color and then I brought it um, or actually no I used crushed olive in the in the first layer to make that yellowish green glow then I brought in the citrus um, the twisted citron and peacock feathers and then I did a light light outside border of chipped sapphire just to kind of bring a little darkness to it but you can see the colors kind of blend together another little mistake not really good uh, blending paper I would always prefer to use Bristol smooth um, if I'm gonna be blending um, Bristol smooth or Anina um, this is some cardstock that I got uh, I'll put that in the description as well and um, it's great. It's great for stamping. It's great for, you know, Copic coloring, but not the smoothest surface to blend. So you can see that it looks a little blotchy, but I have a solution, right? This is what crafters do. I spray a little water and I clap it out. Clap for the stamps. I clamp for my supplies. I clap for you. So that's what I do. I clap the water on and then I remove some of it. So it kind of distresses the, gives you a little couple blotches and we are kind of creating a little space look so that's okay I also went in there and I didn't record it but um because I just wasn't happy with it I used a little of the citron color and the turquoise color to splatter on there so it's really really subtle it doesn't take away from the scene 
All right, now for the part where I was trying to figure something out. So this was new to me, new to you, maybe, I don't know. I'm trying to give these two little characters the look as if that neon green guy is glowing so much that it's, it shows on them. So I'm using the same colors. Um, so I think it's a YGOO and then a YGO six or three. Again, I'll put that in the um, details below. Um, so yeah, so I'm trying to put that on the inside of where they're going to be standing according to that little monster. Um, and then I wanted to make one of them blue. So I'm going in with the darker color first, doing a little shadowing. Obviously, you know, the sh because the light is coming in from the right, we're going to shadow darker colors on the left. Um, simple enough, easy to do. This is, you know, standard Copic stuff. I'm not reinventing the wheel here, but I am just trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. And again, totally not an expert, totally winging it. All right, so now I'm coming back in trying to figure out how do I blend this properly? Um, just found another lighter color um, to kind of bring that a little closer so that it's not so much of the green. Um, but you'll see, it kind of makes sense when I put it all together, but I think sometimes when I'm staring at it for so long, you just start to doubt yourself. Um, yep, I'm pretty much blending, still blending. All right, so it doesn't look bad. It kind of actually looks like a cool little um, gradient, like an ombre effect there. T again, totally not intentional, um, but just figuring it out. Now for the other guy, um, I wanted to go for some, I wanted to make him look a little orange. Um, so I started out with one of the oranges. I ended up going a little darker, I believe, um, just because this was almost, too light to be in the shadow section so I'll go back in in a second but again trying to figure out how to melt in this orange with this lime green so that it makes sense um, yeah can you see I'm uncertain sorry about the dead light in the reflection there and all my inkiness and fingerprints it's kind of rushing this weekend had a lot going on um, trying to balance home life and work and all that other fun stuff anywho back to bringing in the darker green so that the inside the the inside of this one on the left side is the light point and so that'll be the lightest green and then I'll blend all this in and as you can see the Copics are awesome especially if you have enough ink in them um, these are colors that I don't use often so they're inked up and ready um, so this was really nice it came out very smooth to blend so um, this is when I add in a little bit of a darker orange in there to give more shadow and, and depth to it um, I did also and I don't know if I caught it on on film um, I did put a little bit of color around the eye dots um, just to give them kind of I guess a realistic look of the eye um, it works totally fine without it, um, but I thought it might be fun to ha give them little eye colors. So, you know, the green one has like a blue eye and then the red guy has like r bold green eyes and, you know, you could do whatever, whatever you want. You want purple, you could do, I mean, they're aliens or monsters, so you could make them look like anything. It doesn't matter. You can be as creative as you want with these and that's the best part. Super, super cute. Um, I don't think it's just for boys I think little girls would love this I think you know some grown-ups might think this is super cute and bring a smile to their face so definitely consider um, anybody that might want to have a little monster hug there uh, just doing some final touches and adding in some pink or oranges into the ears and little details like that and I think we're almost done with this one a little more blending always blending and then just doing a little highlight around the eyeball so it has a little shadow around it. See, and you keep staring at it and you find little things and, all right. 
All right, so I fussy cut these little cuties out and now what I'm doing, and sorry, I'm off camera, but I'm putting, uh, I'm using my black marker to fill in the sides. Now, little quick tip, I like to have my marker on the facing like the back end so that way if I slip it colors only the back end and doesn't destroy any of what you've just colored. So just keep that in mind, a little quick tip that I've learned along the way from making mistakes. Thought you'd want to know. And these cuties are all done and ready to get together on here. As you can see, um, I'm going to add the creatures right onto the previous ones. I'll stick those there and you can see where the glow comes in. And I'm gonna make this into an interactive card by having a little wobbler behind the glowing one. So once that's stuck on, it's gonna just shake around and su be super, super cute. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you subscribe. Um, check out the blog for more details as well in case I missed anything over the conversation. And I hope you stay tuned for more from both me and from the great companies that I'm working with these days. Thanks so much. Have a great day.